You've got 10 minutes on the clock. I'm excited to hear what you've got to say, but we're going to keep it cruising because I am the shaman today. I am leading us through this journey and you know how that goes. It's all yours. The stage is yours. Perfect. All right. I'm going to share this screen um, and that should be in full screen mode now. So there, perfect. All right. So today I want to talk about building context aware reasoning applications with, with Langchain and LangSmith. Um, and so I'll walk through a little bit what that means and then chat about uh, the two different aspects of that. So context aware and, and reasoning, and then some difficulties that we see uh, people running into. And I'll try to do that all in the next, uh, you know, eight or nine minutes. Um, and, and so happy, happy to chat more about this afterwards with anyone as well. This is something we're thinking a lot about. Um, so, so just to motivate it a bit, you know, chat GPT is great. Um, it is, it is limited by kind of like the context that it has largely. Um, so you can ask it questions about the data that's been trained on. It's fantastic at answering those, but you ask it questions about, you know, uh, uh, like recent information, um, private data, anything like that. And, and it doesn't, um, it doesn't know that. And so that's a lot of what LangChain was, um, built to solve. Um, and so here is an example of a bunch of, uh, applications built on top of LangChain that, combine language models um, with external sources of, of knowledge and of computation and bring them together and bring them together in these context-aware reasoning applications. And so I want to break that down into a little bit because this is something we've we've kind of like, we've looked back on, on all the applications that I built on top of LangChain and we think that LangChain is best kind of like used to build these types of applications. And so as we're doing this thought exercise, what, what exactly does that mean? So context-aware means connecting the language model to external sources of data and computation. We have a bunch of different modules in here to help with that. There's different types of context that you can bring to a language model, and they're all they're, they're different types. They're no one's kind of like better than the other. Um, they serve different purposes, and they and they have different strengths. So first up, you've got kind of like instruction prompting. This is just when you tell the language model what to do, and you're bringing it the context of whatever you tell it to do. This is kind of similar to if you show up um, to work on the first day and you get like an employee handbook. That's that's telling you how the the workplace expects you to behave. But here, you're bringing the context of of your application, and you're telling the language model how you expect it to behave in this particular context. After that, we've got few shot examples. This is showing the language model, not telling. So it's giving it examples of how it should behave um, in, in, in particular scenarios with particular inputs. And then, and then, and then there's the particular outputs. And it's using those to, to show, not tell the language model um, how to do. And, and, and this, is, this is really useful when it's, it's tricky to actually describe what the language model should do. So if I, if I tell a language model to speak in the voice of Demetrius, for example, it's, it's impossible to have um, uh, you know, concise instructions for how to do that. But if I give it a few examples of, of Demetrius doing some of his wild intros, it can, it can maybe pick up on a few of those examples. Retrieval augmented generation is the next type of um, context. And this is probably like the most popular type of context that people think of when they think of context-aware reasoning applications. And, and this is bringing, uh, you know, context to the language model and then asking the language model to generate output based in this context. And so this enables uh, question answering over private documents, everything like that. And then finally, we've got fine tuning. This is updating the weights of the language model, bringing into context the thousand or so examples that you fine tune on. Um, and this is, again, good for cases where you need to provide the language model with a lot of examples that would be otherwise hard to describe. OK, so now let's talk about reasoning, because you can provide context to the language model all you want. But when you're asking it to do some of these more complex tasks, the language model needs to be able to rip to reason about what to do. Um, and so reasoning will kind of like define is we've got some input and we've got some output. And then what happens in the middle? What is the language model kind of like orchestrating to, to produce that output? And there's a few different levels of these. And, and these are more levels increasing kind of like autonomy. And so first, you've just got a simple LLM call um, where you take uh, the input and some context, you pass it to an LLM and you, and you respond with that. Um, and, and that's kind of like the most simple and basic that you've got. The next level up is chaining. So combining multiple of these LLM calls or an LLM call to an action to another LLM call and using that to generate its answer. So still very deterministic. You know exactly what you're going to do. You're going to do this, then you're going to do this, then you're going to do this, then you're going to do this. And you kind of proceed along that. And so an example of this is GPT Researcher. This adds, this is, this is kind of like a research agent, very cool open source project. I'd recommend checking it out. The point is that there's a bunch of steps that it goes down, but it's, it's known ahead of time what the steps are. 
third level's routing. You can now the, you know, use the language model to decide what steps to take. So there's different branches that can go down. And so it adds some more optionality, which the LLM controls. Um, and so I actually lied to you a little bit. GPT researcher, the final step, there's some routing going on. And so it's not fully deterministic. The final step, it can route to a different prompt. Um, and, and so that's a different step that it can take. And so, and so uh, GPT researcher has a bit of the routing going on at the end. Importantly, there's no cycles here. And that's the next differentiation between stage four or level four, where we have these kind of like automatons or state machines. And so you're still using the language models to determine what to do and what paths to take. Now it can enter into cycles though. And so this starts to become really, really powerful. Um, and so some examples of this, <laughs> excuse me, some examples of this, this is from baby AGI. You can see here, there's a few different um, types of agents and it cycles between them. Um, and so it's basically adding a uh, uh, kind of like, it's giving different prompts to different agents and asking it to do different things. And it's breaking down the planning process into a bunch of discrete steps. Reflexion is a similar one. You can see here there's multiple LM calls and there's this cycle between them. And just to ground it in a real world example, we've got sweep.dev, which is a coding agent. And it very explicitly has this plan, execute, validate cycle. And it can cycle between these until it's finished. And so the basic idea here is that you have explicit steps for planning and validating or, or whatever you want. And breaking it down into these distinct stages makes it easier for the language model to, to reason about what to do, as opposed to level five, which is autonomous agents. And you no longer have these discrete steps. You've just got a single LLM call. And it's expected that inside this LLM call, it does all the planning, all the validating, and, 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 and basically everything is an implicit state in its head. And so if we break this down into one chart, we can see that we've got, um, you know, the, and we've broken this down into what the LLM is doing versus what the human is doing. And so deciding what the output is, that's the LLM call, deciding what steps to take. Now you start getting into like the router and the state machine. And then if you define the state transitions, the human defines those for the state machine in the agent. It, it's up to the LLM to do it implicitly in its head. Talking a little bit about the challenges that we see people dealing with when, when they try to build these types of applications. First up is just general orchestration, what steps to take in what sequence, that's where LangChain comes in handy. We've got a bunch of these um, cognitive architectures that you can use off the shelf. Next is data engineering, bringing your data to the, to the LLM in the right format. Um, again, LangChain has a bunch of utils for, for pulling it in here, as well as prompt engineering. So you know the new thing here is uh, language models. You talk with them in prompts. Building that prompt up is, is kind of like one of the most important parts. And debugging all these things is, is uh, particularly tricky. And so all the screenshots that you see are from LangSmith, which is our platform for debugging, logging, monitoring, all these applications. Evaluation is really hard. That's probably worth a talk by itself. And I think there probably are some people talking about evaluation. Um, so I'm not going to go too into that, but it's really difficult. And then finally, collaboration. So collaboration, not only between engineers, but also between product managers and, and other people with domain expertise who do a lot of this prompting. That's all I've got. Thank you for having me, Demetrius. It's it's really exciting to be here, and I'll let you get on to the next uh, exciting introduction. <laughs> Dude, Harrison, it's always a pleasure, man. I really appreciate you coming on here. As you know, I'm guessing you're not going to say yes next time I do it because I just keep hammering that intro, uh, but maybe one day we will do one of these for the Langchain community, which I am hoping, hoping for. That'd be fun. That'd be fun. Excellent. Maybe we'll do llamas and I'll make all kinds of other funny intros for you. You just wait. So anyway, man, I appreciate it. Look forward to seeing what other kind of cool stuff you're coming out with. It's always a pleasure. Talking.